Sodom and Gomorrah were cities mentioned in the Book of Genesis and throughout the Hebrew Bible, the New Testament, and in the Deuterocanonical books, as well as in the Quran and the Hadith. According to the Torah, the kingdoms of Sodom and Gomorrah were allied with the cities of Adma, Zeboim, and Bela. These five cities, also known as the cities of the plain, from Genesis in the authorized version, were situated on the Jordan River plain in the southern region of the land of Canaan. The plain was compared to the Garden of Eden Gen. 13, 10, as being well watered and green, suitable for grazing livestock. Divine judgment by God was passed upon Sodom and Gomorrah and two neighboring cities, which were completely consumed by fire and brimstone. Neighboring Zor Bella was the only city to be spared. In Abrahamic religions, Sodom and Gomorrah have become synonymous with impenitent sin, and their fall with a proverbial manifestation of divine retribution. Jude chapter 1 verse 7 Sodom and Gomorrah have been used historically and today as metaphors for vice and homosexuality, although a close reading of the text and other ancient Near Eastern sources suggest that this association may be incorrect. The story has therefore given rise to words in several languages. These include the English word sodomy, which is used in sodomy laws to describe sexual crimes against nature, namely anal or oral sex, particularly homosexual, or bestiality. Some Islamic societies incorporate punishments associated with Sodom and Gomorrah into Sharia. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The etymology of both names is uncertain, and scholars disagree about them. According to Bob MacDonald, the Hebrew term for Gomorrah was based on the Semitic root mr, which means, be deep, copious water. Historicity There are other stories and historical names which bear a resemblance to the biblical stories of Sodom and Gomorrah. Some possible natural explanations for the events described have been proposed, but no widely accepted or strongly verified sites for the cities have been found. Of the five cities of the plain, only Bela, modern-day Zora, is securely identified, and it remained a settlement long after the biblical period. Topic. Sites The ancient Greek historiographer Strabo states that locals living near Moasada as opposed to Masada say that, "...there were once thirteen inhabited cities in that region of which Sodom was the metropolis." Strabo identifies a limestone and salt hill at the southwestern tip of the Dead Sea, and Karbit Usdum Hebrew, Our Esedom Har Sedom or Arabic, Jabal Alstom Jabal U Sudom ruins nearby as the site of biblical Sodom. Archibald Sace translated an Akkadian poem describing cities that were destroyed in a rain of fire, written from the view of a person who escaped the destruction. The names of the cities are not given. However, Sace later mentions that the story more closely resembles the doom of Sennacherib's host. In 1973, Walter E. Rast and R. Thomas Schaub discovered or visited a number of possible sites of the cities, including Bab eth Dhra, which was originally excavated in 1965 by archaeologist Paul Lapp, and later finished by Rast and Schaub following his death. Other possibilities include Numera, Al Safi, Fifa, and Khanazir, which were also visited by Schaub and Rast. Each of the sites were near the Dead Sea and showed evidence of burning and traces of sulfur. According to Shab, however, who dug at Bab eth Dhra, Numera was destroyed in 2600 BCE at a different time period than Bab eth Dhra 2067 BCE. Another candidate for Sodom is the Tal el Hammam dig site, which began in 2006 under the direction of Stephen Collins. Tal el Hammam is located in the southern Jordan River Valley approximately 14 kilometers 9 miles northeast of the Dead Sea, and according to Collins fits the biblical descriptions of the lands of Sodom. The ongoing dig is a result of joint cooperation between Trinity Southwest University and the Department of Antiquities of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Professor Eugene H. Merrill believes that the identification of Tal el Hammam with Sodom would require an unacceptable restructuring of the biblical chronology. The Jewish historian Josephus identifies the Dead Sea in geographic proximity to the ancient biblical city of Sodom. He refers to the lake by its Greek name, Asphaltites. Topic. Natural disaster Certain skeptics of the biblical account have theorized that, provided that the cities existed at all, they might have been destroyed by natural disaster. 
One such idea is that the Dead Sea was devastated by an earthquake between 2100 and 1900 BCE. This might have unleashed showers of steaming tar. It is possible that the towns were destroyed by an earthquake, especially if they lay along a major fault such as the Jordan Rift Valley. There is a lack of contemporary accounts of seismic activity within the necessary time frame, however, to corroborate this theory. Topic: Other hypotheses. In 1976 Giovanni Pettinato claimed that a cuneiform tablet that had been found in the newly discovered library at Ebla contained the names of all five of the cities of the plain Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Bela, listed in the same order as in Genesis. The names C. Damu and I. Ma'ar and Tm.75 were identified as representing Sodom and Gomorrah, which gained some acceptance at the time. However, Alfonso Archie states that, judging from the surrounding city names in the cuneiform list, C. Damu lies in northern Syria and not near the Dead Sea, and I. Ma'ar is a variant of Imar, known to represent Emar, an ancient city located near Ebla. Today, the scholarly consensus is that, Ebla has no bearing on Sodom and Gomorrah. Excavations of the areas near Mount Sodom, Tel El Hammam, and Bab Eth Dhra, led by Ron Wyatt, uncovered large sulfur chunks embedded within natural rock. However, despite this seemingly incriminating find, these sulfuric deposits are most likely the result of calcite and gypsum reacting with the local strata following a seismic event. Furthermore, Wyatt's reliability is discredited by many scholars, historians, historical organizations, and even religious institutions, including the Israel Antiquities Authority and Answers in Genesis. In the Book of Genesis The Book of Genesis is the primary source that mentions the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Battle of Siddim The Battle of Siddim is described in Genesis chapter 14 verses 1 to 17. Sodom and Gomorrah's political situation is described when Lot had encamped in Sodom's territory. At this time, the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Sodom was ruled by King Bera while Gomorrah was ruled by King Bersha. Their kingship, however, was not sovereign, because all of the river Jordan plain was under Elamite rule for twelve years. The kingdom of Elam was ruled by King Chedorlaomer. In the thirteenth year of subjugation to Elam, the five kings of the river Jordan plain allied to rebel against Elamite rule. These kings included those of Sodom and Gomorrah as well as their neighbors, King Shinab of Adma, King Shemeber of Zeboim, and the unnamed king of Bela later called Zor. In response, Elam's king Chedorlaomer, gathered additional forces from Shinar, Elisar and Goyim to suppress this rebellion from the cities of the plain. They waged war in the Vale of Siddim in the fourteenth year. The battle was brutal with heavy losses in the cities of the plain, with their resultant defeat, Genesis chapter 14 verse 10. Sodom and Gomorrah were spoiled of their goods, and captives were taken, including Lot. The tide of war turned when Lot's uncle, Abraham, gathered an elite force that slaughtered King Chedorlaomer's forces in Hobah, north of Damascus. The success of his mission freed the cities of the plain from under Elam's rule. The judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah The story of the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah is told in Genesis chapters 18-19. Three men, thought by most commentators to have been angels appearing as men, came to Abraham in the plains of Mamre. After the angels received the hospitality of Abraham and Sarah, the Lord revealed to Abraham that he would confirm what he had heard against Sodom and Gomorrah, and because their sin is very grievous. In response, Abraham inquired of the Lord if he would spare the city if fifty righteous people were found in it, to which the Lord agreed he would not destroy it for the sake of the righteous yet dwelling therein. Abraham then inquired of God for mercy at lower numbers first 45, then 40, then 30, then 20, and finally at 10, with the Lord agreeing each time. Two angels were sent to Sodom to investigate and were met by Abraham's nephew Lot, who convinced the angels to lodge with him, and they ate with Lot. Genesis chapter 19 verses 4-5 described what followed, which confirmed its end. 
For but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both young and old, all the people from every quarter. Five and they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men that came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. NRSV, know them, NIV, can have sex with them, NJB, can have intercourse with them. Lot refused to give his guests to the inhabitants of Sodom and, instead, offered them his two virgin daughters, which have not known man, and two, do ye to them as, is, good in your eyes. However, they refused this offer, complained about this alien, namely Lot, giving orders, and then came near to break down the door. Lot's angelic guests rescued him and struck the men with blindness and they informed Lot of their mission to destroy the city. Then, not having found even ten righteous people in the city, they commanded Lot to gather his family and leave. As they made their escape, one angel commanded Lot to, Look not behind thee. Singular. Thee. However, as Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed with brimstone and fire from the Lord, Lot's wife looked back at the city, and she became a pillar of salt. Other references Major and minor prophets in the Hebrew Bible have referred to Sodom and Gomorrah to parallel their prophetic events. The New Testament also contains passages of parallels to the destruction and surrounding events that pertain to these cities and those who were involved. Later deuterocanonical texts attempt to glean additional insights about these cities of the Jordan Plain and their residents. Topic. Moses Moses referred to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in Deuteronomy chapter 29 verses 22-23 Your children who follow you in later generations and foreigners who come from distant lands will see the calamities that have fallen on the land and the diseases with which the Lord has afflicted it. The whole land will be a burning waste of salt and sulfur. Nothing planted, nothing sprouting, no vegetation growing on it. It will be like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in fierce anger. Niv See also, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 32 to 33. Topic. Major prophets Isaiah chapter 1 verses 9 to 10, Isaiah chapter 3 verse 9 and Isaiah chapter 13 verses 19 to 22 addresses people as from Sodom and Gomorrah, associates Sodom with shameless sinning and tells Babylon that it will end like those two cities. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 14, Jeremiah chapter 49 verses 17 to 18, Jeremiah chapter 50 verses 39 to 40 and Lamentations chapter 4 verse 6 associate Sodom and Gomorrah with adultery and lies, prophecies the fate of Edom, south of the Dead Sea, predicts the fate of Babylon and uses Sodom as a comparison. In Ezekiel chapter 16 verses 48 to 50, God compares Jerusalem to Sodom, saying, Sodom never did what you and your daughters have done. He explains that the sin of Sodom was that she and her daughters were arrogant, overfed and unconcerned, they did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Minor prophets. In Amos chapter 4 verses 1 to 11, God tells the Israelites that although he treated them like Sodom and Gomorrah, they still did not repent. In Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 9, Zephaniah tells Moab and Ammon, southeast and northeast of the Dead Sea, that they will end up like Sodom and Gomorrah. Topic: <laughs> New Testament. In Matthew chapter 10 verses 1 to 15, cf Luke chapter 10 verses 1 to 12, Jesus declares certain cities more damnable than Sodom and Gomorrah, due to their response to Jesus' disciples, in the light of greater grace RSV. And if any one will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I say to you, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. In Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 24, Jesus prophesies the fate of some cities where he did some of his works RSV. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. 
But I tell you that it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. In Luke chapter 17 verses 28 to 30, Jesus compares his second coming to the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah RSV. Likewise as it was in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built, but on the day when Lot went out from Sodom fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the son of man is revealed. In Romans chapter 9 verse 29, Paul the Apostle quotes Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9 RSV. And as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left us children, we would have fared like Sodom and been made like Gomorrah. In 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 10, Saint Peter says that just as God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and saved Lot, he will deliver godly people from temptations and punish the wicked on judgment day. Jude chapter 1 verse 7 records that both Sodom and Gomorrah were giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Revelation chapter 11 verses 7 to 8 makes an allegorical use of Sodom when it describes the places where the two witnesses will descend during the apocalypse. Topic: <laughs> Deuterocanonical references. Wisdom 10 to 6 minus 8 refers to the five cities. Wisdom rescued a righteous man when the ungodly were perishing. He escaped the fire that descended on the five cities. Evidence of their wickedness still remains, a continually smoking wasteland, plants bearing fruit that does not ripen, and a pillar of salt standing as a monument to an unbelieving soul. For because they passed wisdom by, they not only were hindered from recognizing the good, but also left for mankind a reminder of their folly, so that their failures could never go unnoticed. Wisdom 1917 says that the Egyptians who enslaved the Israelites were struck with blindness, like the men of Sodom who came to the door of that righteous man Lot. They found themselves in total darkness, as each one groped around to find his own door." Sirach 16-8 says, "...God did not spare the neighbors of Lot, whom he loathed on account of their insolence." In 3 Maccabees 2-5, the high priest Simon says that God consumed with fire and sulfur the men of Sodom who acted arrogantly, who were notorious for their vices, and you made them an example to those who should come afterward." 2 Esdras 2-8-9 says, "'Woe to you, Assyria, who conceal the unrighteous in your midst. O wicked nation, remember what I did to Sodom and Gomorrah, whose land lies in lumps of pitch and heaps of ashes. So will I do to those who have not listened to me, says the Lord Almighty." 2 Esdras 5-1-13 describes signs of the end times, one of which is that, "...the sea of Sodom shall cast up fish." In 2 Esdras 7-106, Ezra says that Abraham prayed for the people of Sodom. <inaudible> Religious views Topic. Jewish Richter Norton views classical Jewish texts as stressing the cruelty and lack of hospitality of the inhabitants of Sodom to the stranger. The people of Sodom were seen as guilty of many other significant sins. Rabbinic writings affirm that the Sodomites also committed economic crimes, blasphemy, and bloodshed. Other extra biblical crimes committed by Sodom and Gomorrah included harshly punishing victims for crimes that the perpetrator committed, including forcing an assault victim to pay for the perpetrator's bleeding, and forcing a woman to marry a man who intentionally caused her miscarriage to compensate for the lost child. Because of this, the judges of the two cities were referred to as Shakrai, liar, Shakarai, awful liar. Zayafi, forger, and Mazel Dina, perverter of justice. The citizens regularly engaged in the torture of foreigners who sought lodging. They did this by providing the foreigners a standard-sized beds and if they saw that the foreigner was too short for the bed, they would forcibly stretch their limbs but if the foreigner was too tall, they would cut off their legs. According to the Book of Jasher, Palteth, one of Lot's daughters, was burnt alive in some versions, on a pyre for giving a poor man bread. Another woman was similarly executed in Adma for giving a traveler, who intended to leave the town the next day, water. When the scandal was revealed, the woman was stripped naked and covered with honey as she was slowly stung to death by bees. 
Her cries reportedly went up into the heavens, the turning point that was revealed to have provoked God to enact judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah in the first place. John D. Levinson views a rabbinic tradition described in the Mishnah as postulating that the sin of Sodom was a violation of conventional hospitality in addition to homosexual conduct, describing Sodom's lack of generosity with the saying, What is mine is mine, what is yours is yours. M. Avit 5.10, a modern orthodox position is one that holds, The paradigmatic instance of such aberrant behavior is found in the demand of the men of Sodom to know the men visiting Lot, the nephew of Abraham, thus lending their name to the practice of sodomy. J. Michelson proposes a reading of the story of Sodom that emphasizes the violation of hospitality as well as the violence of the Sodomites. Homosexual rape is the way in which they violate hospitality not the essence of their transgression. Reading the story of Sodom as being about homosexuality is like reading the story of an axe murderer as being about an axe." Michelson places the story of Sodom in context with other Genesis stories regarding Abraham's hospitality to strangers, and argues that when other texts in the Hebrew Bible mention Sodom, they do so without commentary on homosexuality. The verses cited by Michelson include Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 14, Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 14 where the sins of Jerusalem are compared to Sodom and are listed as adultery, lying, and strengthening the hands of evildoers, Amos chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 oppressing the poor and crushing the needy, Amos chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 and Ezekiel chapter 16 verses 49 to 50, Ezekiel chapter 16 verses 49 to 50 which defines the sins of Sodom as Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty, and did ta'ava before me, and I took them away as I saw fit." Michelson uses ta'ava in place of abomination to emphasize the original Hebrew, which he explains as being more correctly translated as, taboo. Christian. Several theories have been advanced in Christian thought concerning the sin of Sodom. One area of dispute is whether the mob was demanding the homosexual rape of Lot's guests. A second area of dispute is whether the act of homosexuality or the act of inhospitality and violence towards foreigners is the more significant ethical downfall of Sodom. The first contention between the two positions primarily focuses upon the meaning of the Hebrew verb id yada, translated as no in the King James Version, and they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Genesis chapter 19 verse 5 However, the word no in the King James Version has been used to refer to sexual intercourse. One example can be found in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 between Adam and Eve, and Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 Some Hebrew scholars believe that yada, unlike the English word no, requires the existence of a personal and intimate relationship. For this reason, many of the most popular of the 20th century translations, including the New International Version, the New King James Version, and the New Living Translation, translate yada as, have sex with, or, no, carnally. In Gen 19 5, those who favor the non sexual interpretation argue against a denotation of sexual behavior in this context, noting that while the Hebrew word for no appears over 900 times in the Hebrew Scriptures, only 1% 13 of those references are clearly used as a euphemism for realizing sexual intimacy. Instead, those who hold to this interpretation see the demand to know as demanding the right to interrogate the strangers. Countering this is the observation that one of the examples of no meaning to know sexually occurs when Lot responds to the Gen 19-5 request, by offering his daughters for rape, only three verses later in the same narrative, Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man, let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes, only unto these men do nothing. Genesis chapter 19 verse 8 the following is a major text in regard to these conflicting opinions, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Jude chapter 1 verse 7 This reference to going after strange flesh 
is understood in different ways to include something akin to bestiality, having illicit sex with strangers, having sex with angels, but most often God's destruction of the populations of the four cities is interpreted to mean homosexual same -sex relations. Many who interpret the stories in a non sexual context contend that as the word for strange is akin to another, other, altered, or even next. The meaning is unclear, and if the condemnation of Sodom was the result of sexual activities perceived to be perverse, then it is likely that it was because women sought to commit fornication with other than human angels, perhaps referring to Genesis chapter 6 or the apocryphal book of Enoch. Countering this, it is pointed out that Genesis chapter 6 refers to angels seeking women, not men seeking angels, and that both Sodom and Gomorrah were engaged in the sin Jude describes before the angelic visitation, and that, regardless, it is doubtful that the Sodomites knew they were angels. In addition, it is argued the word used in the King James Version of the Bible for strange can mean unlawful or corrupted erm, 7-3, gal, 1-6, and that the apocryphal second book of Enoch condemns sodomitic sex to Enoch 10 to 3 34 to 1 thus indicating that homosexual relations was the prevalent physical sin of Sodom both the non-sexual and the homosexuality view invoke certain classical writings as well as other portions of the Bible now this was the sin of Sodom she and her daughters were arrogant overfed and unconcerned they did not help the poor and needy they were haughty and did detestable things before me therefore I did away with them as you have seen Ezekiel chapter 16 verses 49 to 50. Here the non-sexual view focuses on the inhospitality aspect, while the other notes the description detestable or abomination, the Hebrew word for which often denotes moral sins, including those of a sexual nature, in the Gospel of Matthew and corresponding verse when Jesus warns of a worse judgment for some cities than Sodom, inhospitality is perceived by some as the sin, while others see it fundamentally being impenitence. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Matthew chapter 10 verses 14 to 15. The non-sexual view focuses on the cultural importance of hospitality, which this biblical story shares with other ancient civilizations, such as ancient Greece and ancient Rome, where hospitality was of singular importance and strangers were under the protection of the gods. James L. Kugel, star professor of Hebrew literature at Harvard University suggests the story encompasses the sexual and non-sexual. The Sodomites were guilty of stinginess, inhospitality and sexual license, homo and heterosexual in contrast to the generosity of Abraham, and Lot whose behavior in protecting the visitors but offering his daughters suggests he was scarcely better than his neighbors. According to some ancient commentators, the Bible as it was, 1997, pp. 179-197. Within the Christian churches that agree on the possible sexual interpretation of no yada in this context, there is still a difference of opinion on whether homosexuality is important. On its website, the Anglican Communion presents the argument that the story is not even vaguely about homosexual love or relationships, but is instead about dominance and rape, by definition an act of violence, not of sex or love." This argument that the violence and the threat of violence towards foreign visitors is the true ethical downfall of Sodom and not homosexuality, also observes the similarity between the Sodom and Gomorrah and the Battle of Gibeah Bible stories. In both stories, an inhospitable mob demands the homosexual rape of a foreigner or foreigners. As the mob instead settles for the rape and murder of the foreigner's female concubine in the Battle of Gibeah story, the homosexual aspect is generally seen as inconsequential, and the ethical downfall is understood to be the violence and the threat of violence towards foreigners by the mob. This Exodus chapter 22 verses 21-24 lesson is viewed by Anglicans as a more historically accurate way to interpret the Sodom and Gomorrah story. Islamic. The Quran contains twelve references to the people of Lut, the biblical Lot, but meaning the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah, and their destruction by God is associated explicitly with their sexual practices. The people of Lot transgressed consciously against the bounds of God. Lot only prayed to God to be saved from doing as they did. Then Gabriel met Lot and said that he must leave the city quickly, as God had given this command to Lot for saving his life. 
In the Quran it was written that Lot's wife stayed behind as she had transgressed. She met her fate in the disaster, and only Lot and his family were saved during the destruction of their city, with the understanding that the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are identified in Genesis, but, "...the location remains unnamed in the Quran." In the Quran, Surah chapter 26 Ash Shu backquote era the poets, So, we saved him and his family, all. Except an old woman among those who remained behind. Commentary, this was his wife, who was a bad old woman. She stayed behind and was destroyed with whoever else was left. This is similar to what Allah says about them in Surat al-A'raf and Surat Hud, and in Surat al-Hijr, where Allah commanded him to take his family at night, except for his wife, and not to turn around when they heard the sayah as it came upon his people. So they patiently obeyed the command of Allah and persevered, and Allah sent upon the people a punishment which struck them all, and rained upon them stones of baked clay, piled up. Modern Sodom The site of the present Dead Sea Works, a large operation for the extraction of Dead Sea minerals, is called SDOM. Sedom according to its traditional Arab name, Kerbet as Sudom. Nearby is Mount Sodom, our Sedom in Hebrew and Jabal Alstom in Arabic, which consists mainly of salt. In the plain of Sdom Mysore Esedom to the south there are a few springs and two small agricultural villages, Neo Hakakar and Ain Tamar. <laughs> Second World War Operation Gomorrah was the name given to the bombing of Hamburg in July 1943, in which 42,600 civilians were killed, and where use of incendiaries caused a vortex and whirling updraft of superheated air which created a 460-metre high tornado of fire. See also Bab eth Dhra and Numera, two adjacent archaeological sites said by some to be the two cities' locations. Christianity and homosexuality, Christianity and sexual orientation, Homosexuality and Judaism, Homosexuality and religion, Homosexuality in the Hebrew Bible, LGBT in Islam, Religion and LGBT people, The Bible and homosexuality. Tripura, cities likewise destroyed by divine intervention as described in Hindu mythology Vayera, the Torah portion concerning Sodom and Gomorrah Xenia References External links